Southern America may be known as the base for the most ruthless cartels in the world. However, this part of the world doesn't breed one of the most brutal and wanted cartels in criminal history. Since it is not South America, it has to be one of the countries known for top-notch crimes. You would be surprised that even remarkable countries breed some underground crime lords. This is the story of the Kinahans, Spain's most ruthless cartel. In 1980, a young man was arrested for his involvement in a heroin seizure. He was jailed in prison for six years. Unlike other criminals behind bars, this young man took it upon himself to study and complete two degrees. His intellect was top-notch, and he acquired two new languages in jail. One would think he thought about life and decided to turn a new leaf. Unfortunately, his desire for wealth and the criminal world extensively drove his thirst for knowledge. Can you guess who this young man was? It's Christian Kinahan, the founder of this ruthless cartel named after him. Christy, as he was popularly known, used his intellect to make his way to fame through crime. He's a drug dealer who came from a middle-class background and decided not to be middle in his dealings with affairs of life. Christy willingly chose the path of life that led to crime, and no one knows his reason for that. His extensive knowledge and ability to speak five languages allowed him to conduct major drug deals across Europe. He positioned himself as a successful drug dealer, operating through multiple outlets and distributors. If his trade had been legal, he could have been one of the wealthiest business people globally. Unfortunately, his wealth came from dealing drugs. As earlier said, Christie wasn't born into a crime family, but he chose crime. Can you guess what his sons turned out to be? The fate of both sons lay in the hands of their father. Born into crime, his two sons became big-time cartel lords and took over their father's career. Wealth and power were more desirable than anything, and his sons were exposed to them from birth. The eldest of the sons, Daniel, was responsible for sales and distribution, while Christy Jr., the second son, was in charge of accounts. Daniel, the more popular son, wanted to keep his involvement in the family operation a secret. He dedicated himself to sports, particularly boxing, and gained a lot of fame for organizing boxing competitions. He created a big brand called MTK Global in the sports world. He always denied any connection to crime or drugs, by promoting boxing, he became very well known. However, when you acquire fame, almost everything, including what you want to cover up, becomes accessible to you and the world. This was the case for Daniel, whose name gained more recognition than his brothers, primarily due to his involvement in one of Europe's biggest feuds, overshadowing his accomplishments in sports. If hard drugs were the only goods involved in cartel engagements, then only the drug agencies would be after them. However, their activities extend far beyond that, involving the ruthless exchange of lives for power. In 2015, one of the world's most notorious feuds unfolded, marking a significant chapter in history. At this time, the Kinahans were already known for their notorious engagement. Daniel was involved in a series of crimes that, through his power and wealth, was able to keep him away from bars for long. The Kinahans cartel had grown, and had about 900 men across Europe, but mainly in Spain, who sold and distributed drugs and weapons for them. Amongst these men happens to be Gary Hutch. Gary Hutch was the pace setter of this feud. He was known to be the right-hand man of Daniel and was seen around him at almost every event, both the good, the bad, and the ugly. He worked for the Kinahans, although related to the leader of another cartel group, the Hutch Mob. Both groups had a solid relationship between both groups, but just like every gang group, loyalty went south between them. Gary was the niece of a famous cartel lord, Gerard Hutch, popularly known as the Monk. Along the line, information got to Daniel that Gary was an informant to the Spanish police, even though, after much investigation, this rumor happened to be false after his death. Initially, before the death of Gary, news got to the monk of what was planned against his nephew. He signed an agreement with the Kinahans to spare his nephew's life. The Kinahans agreed but did their mission as Gary was killed on Spanish soil. Gary's death fueled fury amongst the Hutch mob and they retaliated against the Kinahans. In 2016, during one of Daniel's boxing events, the Hutch group decided to attack. The main target of this crime thriller was Daniel. Unfortunately, he had left the event earlier. 
Daniel's unavailability left his prominent men present as the new main characters in this story. David Brine was shot dead, with another member injured. David's death marked the beginning of the feud as the Kinahans did not take his death lightly. They reinforced their men with weapons and went all out to eliminate everybody related to the Hutch mob, starting from his brother, who was a taxi driver. The monk passed from sight but was still in control of his men. The Kinahans, however, were a more organized group than the Hutch mob, hence they were able to kill many people from the other camp. The killings set Spain and Ireland on fire for that period. Both the involved and non-involved from both parties died. Cases of misidentity also came up, and innocent souls were also exchanged with the world beyond. A total of 18 recorded deaths were documented, but many more died. This feud led to the arrest of many gunmen, including many members of the Kinahans group. Daniel and most of the team had to leave Europe to a secluded place where the law would not catch up with them. At that time, Dubai was a haven. Daniel met with other top cartel members there. Together they formed a powerful super cartel. With Daniel representing the Kinahans, the super cartel group went about their business of dealing with hard drugs and weapons and lived very lavishly in Dubai. Moving to Dubai would have been a good way of settling down after the past year's death party. However, the Dubai laws became strict and swung into action to end all criminal activities in the country. Many of the super cartel groups were arrested with their properties seized. Daniel flew into hiding but had most of his bank accounts frozen and held by the UAE law. The United States government wasn't left out of the ordeal of this great group as they imposed severe sanctions on Daniel, his father, and his brother. The Kinahans cartel group still holds some of their activities, but in a very minimal way. Although Christie handed the business down to Daniel a few years ago, he is still alive and was said to be found living in Zimbabwe. He purchased nine de Havilland Canada DHC-5 Buffalo turboprop aircraft from the Egypt Air Force through his connections. This aircraft has certain features that enable the Kinahans to send and distribute drugs to various parts of Europe, once again proving to the world that despite their severe downfall over the years, the burning spirit of the man that started this cartel group had not died. The younger son, Christy JNR, although not the main face of the Kinahan group, was also very involved in the group's criminal activities. He is the crucial treasurer of the cartel group, worth $1 billion. For this reason, he cannot be overlooked when talking about this supposedly great cartel family. Although still in business, the cartel family had to lay low as the Garda Xiochana group of Spain had placed a bounty of $15 million on the father and two sons. The prize has made them unarguably one of the most wanted people in the world. None have been found, but their activities are still felt across Europe. What are your thoughts on the Kinahan story? Leave a comment below and be a part of the discussion. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. Click here to watch the fascinating story of the King of Marbella.